Pellet waggler fishing has become increasingly popular on commercial venues in recent times. The whole process of pellet waggler fishing requires constant casting and constant feeding. So to get this right and to make sure that everything is, is balanced is imperative. The rod I'm using today is the TriCast Trilogy commercial waggler rod in 11 foot 6. Now companies have produced lots of different size rods for different scenarios and different venues. Softer rods for maybe F1 venues, shorter rods for snake like legs. 11 foot 6 though for today, we've got a bit of prevailing wind, uh, it's swirling around a bit and I just want that little bit of extra control. So 11 foot 6 should just be about right. And because of the constant casting and the way we work, it's a, it's a real working method. So everything's got to be balanced and with that I choose a reel of similar size. That's a 3000 size reel and that will just sit on the rod and it balances up nicely to me and everything feels nice and nice, nice and streamlined so it doesn't, uh, doesn't ever feel heavy while you're fishing with it. So when we're tackling up it's also important to make sure we go through all the processes of making sure that our the guides on the rod are nicely lined up because smooth casting we're casting wagglers and we want it to land in the same spot every time we don't want the cast to be strained so keeping everything in line is very important. Attaching the reel, make sure that's nice and secure. And then we can thread the line, making sure we don't miss any eyes. And make sure everything's working like a well-oiled machine. With pellet waglet, in particular, we're looking at fishing in the upper layers of the water, shallow fishing. And it's not just a case of setting up a waggler at, at a particular depth and catching them. We're going to be firing bait in and it might take a while to get those fish feeding up in the water. Um, and the amounts of, of bait we feed and the size of bait we feed it will be dependent on that. Now, to ensure, to give myself every chance of catching, I like to set up two rods. And I generally have two different setups, generally at different depths, but also different size floats. Um, sometimes different length, hook lengths, anything just to give me a bit of variation because with all shallow fishing and especially pellet waggler fishing, variation is what gets you more bites and catches you more fish. Okay, so on the first setup, I've got a loaded pellet waggler, this is a handmade pellet waggler, they're very good, and I've got this set up on a, on a twizzled loop just held in place with a couple of float stops there. Okay, now that has got a little bit of slide there and then it comes down and then I attach my hook length there and I've got about two and a half, three foot hook length. Now the venue we're fishing today, the clay pit here at Western Pools, is a very deep venue. So that's quite, sh quite shallow for this place, but I expect us to catch, we're going to catch well today, I expect us to catch at at least that depth and, and hopefully shallower. Now, as the session progresses, we might find the fish coming higher up in the water in which case I've got another waggler set up, set slightly shallower. Okay, and I've also got this one set up a di bit differently, a bit more of a, a short dumpy waggler. And I've got conventional split shots on there. Now the reason I do this, I have two, two different types of float, one loaded, one with shots, is a lot of this style of fishing is about noise. When the waggler hits the water, that'll induce a bite, induce a fish to come looking. We're gonna be catapulting pellets in, and we're going to be casting in amongst it. So having two different noises as the bait hits the water can get you different, get you more bites at certain stages. Now quite simply with pellet waggler what we're looking to do is introduce feed regularly. Now today on this venue I'm going to choose eight mil pellets. Okay we've got lots of small fish in here and I believe an eight mil pellet will just hopefully pick out the bigger fish, F1s and maybe some bigger carp. And I'm just going to use a normal catapult and fire these in regularly and to start with you're feeding all the time and, and what you tend to find is it takes a while to get the fish there and you'll feed more bait in the early part of the session but as the session progresses and the fish come higher up in the water and become more confident in what you're doing you'll actually find yourself feeding less and hopefully if you it's all about getting into a nice rhythm with things okay so whether you feed and then cast or cast and then feed there's lots of different variations to try but eventually Hopefully you'll get the fish feeding in the upper layers and it should, when, they, when the fish arrive it should be some real rod, rod bending action. So when starting your pellet waggler session, you can do this a couple of ways. Now if I was in a match scenario, what I'd maybe tend to do is fish another line on say the pole first 
and just be flicking flicking an odd pellet out with my catapult while I'm doing that and sort of building it up as time progresses or as the match progresses. But as today we're just doing pellet waggler fishing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spend just five minutes just feeding. I'm going to feed six or seven pellets at a time. I'm just going to pick a spot, line up with something. I've got a tree in front of me over there. And I'm just going to start pinging in five or six pellets at a time and get these fish used to some noise going in and try and build up some confidence, get the fish hearing the noise and looking up. You're trying to get these fish looking up and start intercepting the bait. So I'm just keep flicking six or seven pellets and you're just building an area. You're not being pinpoint accurate. You're just building up an area to get those fish interested. And I'll do this for five minutes or so. And it's important with this, we've got a bit of wind about today. So it's important to, to pick a line where you're comfortable feeding those pellets to. Whereas even if the wind gets up and comes right into my face, I can still get those pellets the required distance. I'm not using terribly strong catapults, just something nice and soft. And I can just be pinging pellets out there. And I'll do this for f five minutes or so. There's no point in fishing yet because although I might catch an odd fish, what I'm intending to do is to build some confidence up with these fish, get them feeding in the area. I don't want just one early fish, I want to catch numerous fish. So by taking a little bit of time out to prepare the swim and get the fee fish feeding, it will pay dividends in the long run. We're a fair way into the session now. I've just made a little change, which has just helped me catch a few more fish. I was getting a lot of fish showing on the surface, swirling and what have you, F1s mainly, I think. Um, and I didn't, seem to, I didn't feel like I was catching as much as I could uh, with what was showing. So I've just changed the size of the float. I just dropped down, I had a, th a three swan polywaggler on there and I've just dropped down to a two swan, just a smaller float. And it seems now with that lighter shot in hitting the water, then I'm getting more bites on the drop. So it's obviously the sound of that hitting the water is attracting the fish as opposed to scaring them. And I think now we've just got the balance right that we can just, as soon as we're casting, we're expecting a bite straight away. So it's just same again, just casting out. But this time I'm just waiting a sec. Oh, and there's a fish, look at that, straight away. So there's obviously enough fish in the peg now that I don't need to feed as much. As we said earlier, once you've got fish in the peg, you don't generally need to fish it, feed as much. And, these fish are now sat there into, waiting for the bait to hit the water and just by coming on that shallower rig and a lighter float, it seems to be working brilliantly now. And they're generally big F1s. I've had a couple of carp. I think it's an F1, but it's pulling a bit. Here we go. There we go, big F1. So that little dumpy float now is just really, really doing the trick. And these fish are feeding confidently and we're catching one all the time. Okay, so that's the end of our pellet waggler session today and I've had a great day catching lots of F1s and carp mixed in with it. A few things to remember when you, you're pellet waggler fishing, a few key points that will keep you catching. Firstly is it's a very busy method and you've got to keep working. Today I've changed floats regularly. I started on 
the bigger float and then dropped to a smaller shallower rig with that and then even ended up on this little tiny dinky waggler and that has caught me so many more fish today so be prepared to change and to work feeding feeding is the key it's no good just standing there just blasting pellets at the peg but it also you do need to feed regularly and you need to vary the amounts you feed and how you feed to try and get those fish competing for bait and taking your bait confidently as it hits the water and finally having confidence in your tackle making sure everything's set up it's a very simple way of fishing but you've got to make sure that your rigs are working right so you're casting efficiently and that the, your bait is landing in the right place every time whether it be through size of waggler size of hook anything it all it's all relevant